Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week four of the Pokemon Premier League. This week we're up against Uzi and the Thunderclap Titans. Um, you might think that this game couldn't have come at a better time, really, considering we are, spoilers, 3-0 for the season so far. Yes, I'm as shocked as you all are as well. Um, but actually, you couldn't be more wrong. Um, this week where I played Uzi was an absolutely manic week for myself. Basically because it was my stepsister's wedding. Uh, so I travelled Friday to Sunday, which is usually prime building and battling time. Um, so instead what I did was build in the car on the way home, hung over, and then battled first thing Monday morning before work. Um, nothing to do with Uzi. Obviously he's oceanic time zone, so it's a bit different to playing someone in Europe and... Uh, and uh, America but yeah not the ideal circumstances for myself but we will make of it what we can now like I said we are free and oh not the best but if we could go four and oh um, that will put us in a really solid position to probably end up in playoffs for the end of the season I imagine you probably need six and three maybe to make the top four so being four and oh would really take the pressure off myself a loss while not terrible right now wouldn't obviously be great because it's never good to lose a game, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Anyway, let's hop into the team and see what we've got this week to take on Uzi and the Thunderclap Titans. The first team member this week is going to be Gliscor. Special defensive set this week to try and help and take on Uni, the Killer Watchroll, which I can almost guarantee is going to come to this game, especially Terra Flying. Obviously, I am immune to Electric Stab. And the Terra Ground option for Uzi is there, but obviously I'd be immune to that too. So the flying moves are going to be a problem. And they're like a general problem for my draft, um, which isn't great. So that's why we've gone for a special defensive Discord. Spikes and Toxic are going to be very good against Uzi this week. He does have a Tinglu. He does have an Alivamola. If, if I'm actually able to land a Toxic on either of those, then that's going to put it on a timer. And it's going to make life easier for things like Latios, which... Tinglu kind of does well against, but I can kind of chip it down over time because it doesn't have reliable recovery. So Gliscor is kind of here just to, to break a few of the bulky things down, act as kind of like a pivot on the Killer Wattrel, and just be a general nuisance to Uzi. The second team member this week is going to be Latios. I've already mentioned Uzi has a Tinglu, but outside of Tinglu, he doesn't really appreciate the coverage of Dragon and Psychic Spam. We do have Flip Turn, obviously, to help myself get out from the Tinglu matchup, along with a little bit of Chip. If he's Rocky Helmet, so be it. It's not going to be exactly detrimental to Latios, and it also means that I know what item he is, and he isn't going to be any kind of recovery item. We are running the standard uh, 252 in speed and 252 in special attack. Can't remember what this was to outspeed, but it was to outspeed something, because, or at least speed tie. Otherwise, I definitely wouldn't have gone for 252 in speed. Obviously, max special attack just to do as much damage as we can. Recovery is there to kind of help with longevity uh, in this battle, because like I've said, it can do a lot of damage across the game. The reason I'm running Dragon Pulse this week over the Draco Meteor is because I don't want to give Gouging Fire too much of an opportunity to come in for free if I'm at, say, minus 2 or minus 4. Yes, I could potentially flip turn out, but it doesn't necessarily help me uh, because Gouging Fire is a Gouging Fire and it will do a lot of damage to anything that is sat in front of it. So that's the reasoning behind Dragon Pulse this week rather than Draco Meteor. The third member of the team this week is going to be Blastoise. Now I've already mentioned Gouging Fire and the sole <laughs> like reason Blastoise is coming this week is because of that thing. Um, it's terrifying. You have to kind of respect all kinds of sets. And we've seen Uzi run with lead gouging fire like every game so far this season where he's claimed a kill or dented someone's team. So it's terrifying. For that reason, we are running a very sort of standard-ish Blastoise set, I guess. We've running the flip turn for momentum, rapid spin, raw. You've got the choice between raw and haze. I feel like Roar is probably more beneficial because it also gets it off the stage. And also if he has Substitute, then it will break through that. Haze might do that too. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Um, and then finally, we have got Earthquake for a bit of a stronger move that is actually super effective into Gouging Fire because obviously Water Typing isn't. Now I say Blastoise is here for Gouging Fire. 
gouging fire, yes it resists the fire move, and I'll put resists in air quotes because nothing actually resists a fire move from gouging fire with heat crash. Um, but there is also the option that you could just click scale shot or outrage and you know just destroy my blast close that way so when i say this is kind of like my answer to gouging fire it's more of like a pivot slash a check to it and also a, a way of stopping it from setting up that is literally blast close roll this week next on the team is going to be tinker ton now i've already mentioned that uzi has a gouging fire and i've already mentioned he has a ting Lu. i've even mentioned that he has a terra ground kilowatt troll however while all those things kind of threaten Tinker Turn, it is probably alongside Gliscor one of the best things I have for the Kilowatt Troll. Um, plus the fact that I can kind of make it a bit speedy to have Reflect Up or potentially paralyze a Gouging Fire before it starts clicking Dragon Dance is really beneficial. Knock Off is there obviously just to be annoying and play rough. I'm going to say it's strong stab, but I've come to learn that Tinker Turn is not strong really offensively in like any meaning. However, it's just nice to have because like I've mentioned, it, it could do a bit of damage to the Gouging Fire. It can be super effective to Ting Lu. Obviously, it's not affected by Vessel of Ruin. So you've got that. But it's literally here just to get Reflect Up, Thunder Wave things. And then potentially if it, I am facing the Kilowatt Troll, then I am able to get off its item. You know, if it's Specs, Life Orb, whatever it may be, Magnet, I don't know, Sharp Beak. Um, and play rough can just do nice damage to to it, no matter if it terrors or not. So that's the reasoning behind Tinker Tun this week. The fifth Pokemon this week we're bringing is Miss Magius. Um, it worked so well for us in week one this season. We decided to bring it back. Slightly different this time, but in effect the same thing. Uzi's draft does not like ghost and fairy typing combined. So let's run it back and do it again. And actually... Uzi has got a Tinglu, which is coming because it's such a good answer to the Latios that this might give me a nice setup opportunity. Because if I do Terrastalize into Fairy, then I pretty much resist or I'm immune to the stab of that thing. Yes, it has Vessel of Ruin, but I can just Nasty Plot, Sub, Nasty Plot, Sub, and then just Drain and Kiss any health back I do lose. We are running the Babiri Berry, mainly because of Lucario. If I am Terra into Fairy, Bullet Punch could be a way out to stop a sweep. Therefore, with the Babiri Berry and a bit of sort of investment into HP and physical defense, which I had left over from not needing them in speed, I should be able to take that pretty well and then be able to revenge kill the Lucario and continue to either sweep or heavily dent Uzi's team. That's the whole idea behind Miss Magius this week. The sixth and final Pokemon this week and finally making its debut for the Nourish Skitty is going to be Vile Plume. Now, Vile Plume was a very late addition to the team. And by late edition, I mean we'd made a team and we then thought, nah, that last Pokemon doesn't work, which was Cinderace, because he had too many checks for Cinderace. Let's stick Vileplume in there. And I agree, Vileplume on paper has a really good matchup in this game. Um, we are running leftovers before anyone moans because I do am, sorry, I do am, great English. I am running Terra Fairy on this thing as an alternative to Miss Magius if I feel that is better. And obviously if I tear into Fairy I don't want Black Sludge because then I will damage myself instead of recover health. So we are running Leftovers. Effect Spore is just the far superior ability to Chlorophyll if I'm not running Sun. Um, we do have Sludge Bomb and Moonblast because there's like a coverage. They work really well together. And Sludge Bomb has obviously got that good chance to poison if Gliscor hasn't already toxic something. And then Moonblast is just strong stab if I am Terra Fairy. Strength Sap is just really reliable recovery and it also helps with the gouging fire potentially if that is a, like a switch into this thing which is very realistic and then i'm also running leech seed just for more general annoyance so you know again it could really help with things like ting lu alamomola it could force alamomola to switch out i don't know if we'll run flip turn he will run baton pass i'm pretty sure baton pass also carries leech seed over so that will be quite nice too he does have a Serena as a grass type, but obviously that's not going to really want to switch into a Vile Plume. Yes, it gets Triple Axel, but it's then risking a Stab Sludge Bomb to the face and also a Strength Sap reducing the attack of that thing and it's a physical attacker. So I don't really ne like necessarily see Leech Seed being a, a, a potential risk there. If I click it, I don't see Serena coming in. So this is the six. I will have to say this was the hardest game to plan for so far and it's the one I wasn't able to put much time into. And kind of upon reflection, looking at this team, it's very passive, 
So if things work out the way that I want them to, where I can get spikes up and toxic up with Gliscor, we should be looking good. Otherwise, I might be able to, you know, get a bit pinned into a corner. So we'll see how this goes. Um, and let's just get into the game against Uzi and the Thunderclap Titans. Before that, though, make sure you please do leave a like and comment below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. 75% of people who watch my videos at the moment aren't subscribed. So any of you who do, you know, fancy clicking that button for me, that'd be hugely appreciated. Anyway, on to the battle. Okay, everyone, we're here. Not that you can really see me because the sunlight is awful at the moment. I don't have any blinds in this window. Um, welcome to week four of the PPL. Uh, against Uzi and the Thunderclap Titans. Um, small disclaimer, going to get my Johns out of the way. I've been away up until yesterday afternoon. We're now battling on the Monday morning. So I spent <laughs> my yesterday afternoon while hungover and tired <laughs> building for this game. And that's resulted in quite a thick story-ish team. So I apologise for everyone, including Uzi involved. Um, but I, yeah, Uzi's team is terrifying. I mean he has gouging fire and that's enough to 6 anyone so I'll let him know that I'm going to be searching um, and obviously wish him have fun, not too much good luck because I hacked Drew last week, he hacked, although Drew kind of hacks me too so um, let's go with the Cassiopeia team, uh, theme today. Um, yeah, he kind of got hacked to shit by Nexus last week. Sorry for the spoilers. So, yeah, I'm not not too hopeful this game. The only thing I'm potentially not too happy about is my Blastoise. Yes, I'm for his death because he has a gouging fire. But I did really want to bring physical shell smash. So he's got the uni. So he's got kilo, aloe, gouging fire. He brought frostlass. It crossed my mind because Gliscor is quite good here. Saruna and Team Lou. So I should be able to wear his team down quite well here. Um, no Enamorous, which is quite nice. My Vile Plume looks nice here. Uh, so Gliscor, Latios. Last twice, Tink, Miss Mag, and the Wild Blue. So I was kind of thinking I'd lead with the Tinkerton, no matter what. If he leads Gouging Fire, that's kind of fine. Because I'm going to click T Wave. Um, otherwise, like, if he's Booster Speed or like Scarfed, he could just one shot my Latios. So if I get the T-Wave off, uh, my can always just go into Blastoise and click Raw. Uh, unless he then, you know, is a madman and clicks Double Outrage at plus one. This man has like Gouging Fire every game, so this could be a bit of a throw. Um, but if I lead Tink, I don't know if he'll necessarily think that I'll stay in. Plus, he might also then want to think that he doesn't want to take a Thunder Wave. So as long as I don't miss a bit of this yellow magic, we should be good. But I don't want to paralyze too many things because I've got Toxic and Gliscor this week. So as DZ, right, so the Frost last lead. Cool, we are Spin as well. So he might go for the Taunt. I am Mold Breaker. Um, he might not want to stay in. I could just knock. Um, am I faster than this? I am almost max speed, so he will probably have to be speed on this as well. What's max speed for us, lass? 350, maybe 110. So he will outspeed. Um, where's Tink? So knockoff should do half if he's just like... I'm just going to put knock. Because um, if I get an item off something, then that's really nice. He taunts me, which is nice, so I did predict taunt. So we get the knockoff, which is nice. Um, do I click knock again? Oh, well, I, I can't click knock again. Um, <laughs> so I've literally got play rough or switch. Um, he doesn't click a. See, the thing is, play rough doesn't kill, it, it takes two. And I can't really switch in on this thing. 
So I think Tink might just have to go for the player up here. He can't really do too much to me, I don't think. Uh, he could set up some spikes, which is fine. But if this goes, what does he like have for Gliscor outside of Triple Axel Serena? Which is also a problem, by the way. Uh, Triple Axel Serena is terrifying. I don't really have an answer for that, so it could be a Scarf Serena, which I have to keep in mind. What's he going to go into here? I mean, Alan the Mode is probably quite free. Um, I'm a bit annoyed that I obviously couldn't get up anything, so he goes Aloe, which is fine. I do play rough. Is he Helmet? We'll get some... Yeah, he's Helmet. Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, he could just flip turn here. Now I could go Blastoise, which is quite free, but that gives him Serena. Um, we'll go into this thing, because if he flip turns, he might get uh, effects board, which will be good and bad, depending on what it is. Um, mainly because I have got Toxic on my list, like I said. You know, I don't want to paralyze this thing. Sleep could be quite nice, obviously. Um, the baton passes. So now he goes Gouge and Fire. I'm pretty confident he'll go Gouge and Fire here. Um, is there anything else he really want to go to? He could go Frostlass. If he does, do I want to burn the Terra Fairy? There's no Lucario, so my Babiri Berry on Minus Magius is kind of irrelevant. But depending on the Serena set, my. Is he, he could be protective pads on his um, gouging fire. Do I want to Terra Fairy Minus Magius here? I mean, yes, it's good against Ting Lu. Could help with Frostlass a bit. Could help with gouging fire a bit. Um, I think uh, this is the issue I have, right? This, this gives so much momentum to the gouging fire. Uni. Okay. He goes into this thing. Um, I go Gliscor because it gives me my... It gives me my Toxic Orb. I am max special defense. Whether that will take too many... I haven't been able to take like too many calcs in prep because, like I said, like I've been traveling a lot this week and I haven't really been on my computer too much to do the calcs. And showdown, calculator on... Okay, so he does click the Volt Switch. Do I click Toxic for free? Do I click the Toxic, or do I click Spikes? Um, so if he goes Frostlass, I go Tink. Do I want to get my Spikes up sooner rather than later? Do I click Toxic because it's free on anything on this team? I'm going to click Spikes. We know Aloe isn't boots, so the more spikes they get up, the better. He has got Serena, which could obviously be the more. He does go into this, which is annoying. Um, I could have clicked Earthquake, but I don't know if it would have actually killed. Earthquake could have killed if he's like the standard set, like max HP, max speed. We go straight Tink. Like, I don't care if he gets up spikes, I have got Blastoise for spin if needed, but the more spikes I get up on his side, the better. Um, so yeah, he sets up a spike. Are you willing to let this thing get knocked off again? He might just go for his three layers of spikes. Um, which is fine. He taunts me again, that's fine. So he's only going to get two layers of spikes up max. Um, is he going to Destiny Bond? He might Destiny Bond. Oh, he gets the Curse Body again. Um, is he going to Destiny Bond my tank? Taunt, Spikes, Destiny Bond. Ice move. Are you going to Bond? Because does he value a second layer of Spikes, which I could spin away? What do I need Tink for on his six? 
it kind of helps with Serena a bit. I am faster than Gouge and Fire. Man, um, is he gonna bond? Is he gonna bond? Is he gonna bond? Or is he gonna get out the spikes? I say fuck it. But yeah, I think he bonds. He fund waves. Okay. You know what? I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. But I think this means he does go gouging fire after this. Do I get full parry? No, we hit. Okay. Alright, Tink takes down the. Frostlass, which makes Bliscor a lot cooler here, I think. Now, if he comes in Gouging Fire, do I want to just stay in and sack it? Really? Right, this is the Gouging Fire. He's the oh, I'm taunted. No, oh, I'm taunted. Is my, my taunt hasn't worn off yet, has it? No, one turn left. Um, he's only got one spikes. He's not booster. If he's choice, then like, I don't know what he's going to go for. But I, I can just click roll. Wait, is he boots? Did he take the spikes? I didn't, I didn't see that. Um, I'm not haze. I am raw. He crashed. That should do very little to me, right? Okay, that looks banded. That's not great. <laughs> um, was that banded? Gouging. Fire. To my last choice. He has to be choice banned. Yeah, he did take spikes. He's choice banned. I think I click rapid spin. Um, I could see crash again. Okay, we do take the hit. We spin. Get rid of the spike. Um, I think. I'm not going to outspeed now. I'm not going to outspeed him unless he's bulky. But I will take one more heat crash unless he crits me. At which point I think I just click the earthquake button. Because then this thing's chipped. Um, and it's done its job. He withdraws. Okay. So there's no spikes up, so I can just Queen Addy. So he goes into the... Serena. Nice play to be fair. Is he gonna try and spin my spikes? I'd have to flip turn there, man. I'd have been in a pretty good pretty good position. Um right, is there a world where I outspeed this Serena? So I actually outspeed this thing if it's not scarfed. If he is scarfed, do I wanna find out? Let's flip flip. I think. Yeah, okay, so he's not Scarf. I think Blastoise has served its purpose. Um, and I think we go Tink. So I'm not physically defensive, but I am max HP. And he U turns. Does he go into the. Gouge of fire again. Take that banded. He didn't spin though, so Gouge of fire is going to get worn down. The T wave on this is really annoying because otherwise I would have been out, I would have outsped it. So this is like a sacking game every time against this now. <laughs> um, I'm going to click T wave in case for some reason he, you know, he doesn't click heat crash, but he'll click heat crash and get the kill. So I can go Blastoise here and get like a slow flip turn off for momentum, so we'll take a heat crash. He could click Outrage to predict. Um, I don't think he will, I think he just clicks Banded Heat Crash and he'll just claim to kill. He has to be Banded, he has to be. Um, 
Like he was doing 100 damage to me. Yeah. Each time. We go like this and we click flip turn because then he goes team move. Do I click Dragon Pulse in case he stays in? It, does he stay in? He's got a whole Ting Lu, like he goes Ting Lu, right? Gavin Fire is 1 and 0. Vice Dice is 0 and 1. He's got a whole Ting Lu. He can't, he just doesn't. But I could just Dragon Pulse and then flip turn. Ding to Glisten. I think I might just do that. And once he's the rogue choice scarf team loop. That would be incredible. Not that I'm sure it actually outspeeds me. So I could have flipped flipped him, but chip on this thing, he boots. Not boots, so he's probably lefties. So this this might do some good chip. Might see. You know what? That's respectable damage. He's left over. Okay. So I could go in two. Reveal I'm not I could, I'm revealing I'm not choice here. Um, but this is good chip good chip on this this thing though. What do I want to go in here? If I will play Miss Magius Gliscor. I think Gliscor's the play on this thing. By hands for death and it is the answer to uni. So we'll see how that goes. But I click toxic no matter what. I'm not liking this. I, I've said before my game, I don't know, I can't remember if I said it in the recording or not, but I felt like my team was quite passive this week. And a choice man gouging fire is <laughs> is a threat. Um, so that flip turn does next to nothing. Um, he's clicking a dark move, right? He's definitely clicking a dark move. If I go into this thing. Um, Clicks up, just clicks rocks. Okay. So he's got rocks up. I don't think that's the end of the world for my team. But we put Toxic here. Because he's got nothing for it. And I could get up a second there, spikes to be fair. But we're going to put Toxic. Don't miss on the alley. How much does Alamon know there's like Ice Beam do something like that? Um, uh, I mean, school does very little. I think toxic or heal actually like means scold only does like ten percent or something. He might be wish protect or wish pass. Sorry, he's got some pass, so he's not going to flip turn. So he draws. What's he going to? Queen Allison. There. My switch into this uh, minimal at this point. Try to click the poison jab. Try to click the poison jab, eh? We know he's not scarfed, so I'm pretty sure he's not gonna. How much does triple axle do here? To I mean, triple axle against me is incredibly free now. Um, so I mean, triple axle's gonna kill me. Yeah, killed. Unless he doesn't hit free. But he's gonna hit free. So this is a really bad position. I think I just go into this and sack it, like he might predict me to go to Blastoise. You know he's not choice, so like oh, he clicks spin. Okay. He clicks the spin. Spin to win move. Um, what's this switch in here? What's this switch into? A good old strength sap. Killer Watchroll is probably his switch. Into. Unless he stays in and synthesizes. That would be wild. Uh, let's just go Strength Sap. 
make sure we come out of this with a lot of health. The triple axles. He hits one time. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, this thing's a threat. This thing is a big threat. I wonder if it's AB. So triple axle shouldn't do a lot to me. It will go down this turn. So I'm going to just click sludge, I think. Does my vile play live? You move. I'm gouging fire. If I terror. I imagine I'm probably quite light. And it's going to come down to then <laughs> clicking moves with Latios versus Gouging Fire. I think that's how it's going to go. Triple Axel's me again. He hits three times this time, so slight, slight redemption. Probably should have just clicked um, Strength Sap again there. Gouging Fire comes in there. And I'm at half health. I've got no spikes up. Um, so gouging fire, choice band, heat crash. To my vile plume, if I'm Terra Fairy, seventy nine to ninety three. So I die. So I don't Terra here. Basically, using to this. You just click Hurricane because I can't switch into Hurricane. Or do I just go Gliscor? So I'm for death. And if you specs, then like Gliscor's here for this. So and Doofus could still do stuff against Tinglu and Alamomola. So I think that's worthwhile for now. Um, he's Terra, Terra Flying Hurricane. Like I really struggle to switch into this thing. Um, now Tink's gone. So we'll see how well Gliscor takes this. Probably not very well. Oh, he Terra Blast because he doesn't want to miss the Hurricane, so that might make it a bit better. Might help a bit. It does not help a bit at all. Um, uh, I think I just lose to this. Because he can't miss. Uh, we click Poison Jab. It's really sad that I have revealed I'm not Choice Scar for Latios. Um, I think I don't have much choice other than going Latios now. Because I think this thing might just clean up here. Um, the only other option I do have is Terra on my Vile Bloom. But even then, I don't know if I'll live. So let's just click the. Do I click? I click Luster Purge. But I really don't see myself coming back from this unless Miss Magius can pull it out of the hand big time. Because it does outspeed the rest of his team, other than this. If this thing goes down, Miss Magius looks awesome. I don't know if, like, Terra Blast kills here. But he could go Ting Lu quite safely here, because I haven't got spikes up anymore. But I can't poison it. He does withdraw. Okay. He does go into this. Okay, I should have clicked Dragon Pulse. Really? Um. Okay. I'm really not liking where this game is going, guys. I'm really not liking where this game is going. Um, and he's going to get his lefties. I can't knock them off. Let's flip turn. Serena's gone. So, like, I can just sit in a leech seed and split out his strength sap, actually. But what I need is a good old bit of effect ball going on here would be nice. So I go into I go into this. Um, I might have to Terra on this. I might have to. Does he double? No, of course he doesn't. He paybacks. That does nothing. Okay. Um, I click Strength Snap. Serena's dead. I need to move that down. I just straight sap, right?
Because then I think I actually live a hit from Gouging Fire, if I Terra. So he has to fear the Terra Water. He is Uni again. Okay. I have no switching, so but this will give me good health. Right, so what what do I do? Competitive boost. I didn't think of that. I completely forgot about that. So that's game. Uh, I completely forgot about competitive. I thought he'd be lightning rub this whole time. <laughs> um, so we have to do this and hope for a poison. If I was Terra Steel. Uh, now this is this is game. This is game. I have nothing for it. Like cause even if I was Terra Steel, he just picks a, a uh, electric move the next turn. This is just a last ditch attempt. I need like a crit poison or something. He Terra blasts. He's got specs, right? Yeah, that's game. The only way I could have really got out of this is if I bluffed the Choice Scarf on the Latios. Um, because even now, like, I don't, I don't live a move. There's no chance. I nearly clicked the Leech Seed as well. I nearly clicked the Leech Seed. I should have just gone for raw damage. Um, Click Dragon Pulse, but I, I I die, so it's just the uni sweep. I don't have a lot to say at this point. So we are gonna lose our unbeaten streak to the start of the season, but I knew that coming into this game it would be very, very tough. Um and I probably shouldn't have let Tink go down, because Tink was a problem <laughs> for this thing. This is where I find out I live with this. I've got good special bulk I guess, but um there's not a lot I can do in return to this, I can't one shot it. So, good game, Uzi, good game. Big 4-0, like, you know, he's got this thing, which is probably Specs. He's got Gouging Fire, which is Choice Banded. So I, like, can't do anything against that. Um, and, yeah. I did have Cinderace on the team originally. Um, would that be much difference here? Not really, because this thing outspeeds my entire draft. And I didn't bring something that should, you know, have been able to to stop it. So fair play, uh, good game to Uzi. I think uh, he he completely outplayed me here. But like I've said before, I didn't really have everything in this game, so I wasn't expecting too much out of it. But um, I should have thought about competitive. I didn't. It completely slipped my mind. I honestly thought he'd be Lightning Rod because I thought Zeb Striker looked like a really good answer to it. Zeb Striker was also on the squad at one point, but I took that off with the assault vest. So. Uh, that's a shame. Um, but yeah, guys, we can't win them all. Uh, I think I've ridden my luck the last two games a bit. So uh, I'll take the loss. I'll take it gracefully. So that puts us 3 and 1 for the season. So we're still in a really good position. But if you did enjoy that battle, guys, um, make sure you leave a like and obviously subscribe to the channel as well because we've still got at least five more weeks if we don't get playoffs. And I'll see you later.